Hello everybody and welcome to my channel Yaini. Today I wanted to talk to you about art accounts of all different shapes and sizes. Before we begin, I'll explain a little bit about what you're seeing on screen. This is a screenshot from Call Me By Your Name and in the speed paint I'm drawing the other half of his face and at the end I'll show the finished result. I didn't record the whole piece because it was very long. <laughs> the part that you're seeing right now cost me about an hour and the piece is nowhere near finished, so yeah. Okay, I'll start talking about the topic now. When I look back, I've had an art account since I was 12 years old, technically. I didn't have social media back then, but there was this old drawing app that I used to use called Drawcast and I had an account on there and I used to make art on my iPod <laughs> on my iPod touch just with my finger and that was actually how I started to learn making digital art even though I've had a break from that for a long time in between that I used to use it a lot so none of my art accounts has really really taken off yet my fan art account is probably um, the one that I have the most followers on. I'm on 2300 something right now. So, for, and for me, that's a really big achievement. And that art account is just a lot of fun. <laughs> it's actually just a hobby, you know? And so I was thinking and I started counting and I realized that I literally have four Instagram art accounts, a Tumblr art account, a Twitter art account, and my YouTube channel. So I'm literally like swimming in different places to post and yeah, um, I have a lot of places to update. And yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not claiming that I'm an expert, but I, I just thought I'd give you some tips on posting on different medias because the rules are kind of different on every app and it took me a long time to kind of figure out how to post, how often to post, when to post, even things like what types of colors people like to see and well not necessarily that it has to be one color palette that's not what I mean but stuff like that it, it takes a few years to find out and I would have really appreciated just somebody kind of explaining how to because I know quite a lot of people that are just scared to start because they don't know where to begin. I mean, there's so many art accounts out there with so many different talents and there's like this whole spectrum of people on the internet and if you're a starting artist on social media, you feel that it's very important to post something and to, you know, get yourself out there because it's literally one of the best marketing places ever. But at the same time, there's so much competition that you kind of, you know, you may feel overwhelmed, like you're just drowning in this sea of all these <laughs> crazy, amazing, talented artists. So I'll start with Instagram, which is the place that I post most often because I think Instagram is the best platform for posting art right now, mostly because it's literally based around photos and videos, whereas something like Twitter is a lot more text-based and art can get lost really easily on your account. But on Instagram, when people visit your profile, it's like this neat grid and it's just really simple and people can see what you're about. And it's also really easy to build an art community that way and make friends because you literally see all of the posts. Whereas on Twitter, Twitter is probably the worst place to post art because firstly, it's really controversial. So you have to really think about what you're posting and who it's about and what what you're saying before you post it because I have had so many instances where an online friend of mine just got bashed for something they posted which they didn't even mean you know in a negative or wrong way or like whatever they got attacked for they didn't really mean because they're a nice person and <laughs> they didn't mean to hurt anybody but Twitter is just really sensitive so if you make simple art like landscapes or simple portraits or something like that then you'll probably be fine but if you do 
more controversial stuff you really have to be aware of where you're posting it on whereas on instagram it's probably less likely that you get attacked for posting something or for having a certain opinion about something that being said here are a few tips that you can use to improve your posts i guess <laughs> so the first tip is hashtags and this is a really obvious one because everybody uses hashtags but as an artist you'll get no exposure whatsoever like people will not see your art if you don't tag it as something and big tags can help just like hashtag art or hashtag artists i always tag those just to make sure like if you get promoted on one of those pages it can be really really helpful but the chances are small that's actually gonna happen so it's actually also really important to tag what you made so if you made fan art of a person or a character just tag the name of that person or character or the tv show they're from or whatever because that will probably be a smaller tag than really broad ones like hashtag art and the people looking through that tag are more likely to click on your post and engage with it because it's the topic they're interested in. And one thing I always, always do is if I'm making fan art, put the name of the person and just literally put fan art in the hashtag after it because I myself love looking through that tag to find new artists and I know that a lot of other people do that too so that's a really really big one the second thing for instagram is or well probably every platform but i've only really figured it out for instagram is the time that you post so i know that i mean i live in europe so i know that i have to post around 10 pm because that way america has woken up it's morning for them they're all eating their breakfast and in europe it's it's the evening so everybody's on their phone as well Th those are probably the places where my followers are from so it's important that when they are scrolling through their feed or like a little bit of their feed that they see your post coming through because if you post you know in the middle of the night or really early in the morning nobody's gonna see it because nobody will be on their phone and then it will be lost in the sea of all the other posts so that can help to plan out a little bit more. And what also helps is planning what your posts look like next to each other. So I have downloaded a little app called Unum. Put a link down in the description. And it's this really nifty app that you can use that has like basically a, an Instagram grid. So you can just drag the photos and arrange them in the way you would want to post them. So you can see what it looks like. and. This is really nice because if you know that you're gonna post a lot, you'll probably have a few posts piled up that you can, you know, spread out throughout the week. And this way you can just plan out which way they will look nicest. So for example, I do this thing with different background colors. I always make sure that two of the same background color don't aren't next to each other because I don't like how that looks. <laughs> I want it to be, you know, scattered. So this way I can plan what I'm posting and see if it looks good or not. So yeah, that's really helped me a lot. I also know for Twitter that you should use less hashtags or so just one or two because they look really ugly and you should use emojis because people like seeing a pop of color on their twitter page because it's all like texts and if you have little images in your title it'll grab their attention uh, and it also just looks really aesthetic twitter cropping is really really horrible <laughs> Uh, if you're an artist trying to build up a community on Twitter, it's you'll know about this. It's really horrible because you have this horizontal cropping. And if you do art like I do a lot, which is portraits, you have a vertical canvas. So the cropping always looks weird. Like it's just the top of the head or like, you know, a chin and you can never see the full face. But my tip for that is to post two pictures. So post just the normal canvas or 
you know, painting or whatever you want to post and then make a detail shot for it. So zoom in a little bit and post that too. And this way the cropping will be square so people can actually see the art and it looks a lot better. I mean, I've done it only a few times and it's really like changed everything for me. <laughs> it looks way better. So that's a really big one. And for all communities, for all social medias, just engage with your followers. Especially if you're a really small account, of course respond to comments, respond to direct messages, respond to requests and something that's helped me grow like a, a tiny following is um, collaborating with artists that are in, in the same genre. Firstly, it's really fun and you get to make a few friends out of it, which is a lot of fun as well because you never know what they're gonna be doing in the future and you know, maybe you'll be doing a really big project together or yeah, it's just like part of your network. And it's also really fun to just talk with people about what you like. You obviously both like art or maybe you have a certain topic that you're making art about and you can talk like you have this connection with them through that so i could really recommend that as far as i know small art accounts are always really nice because you don't have a big enough following yet to start ignoring people not that big art accounts really ignore people but you know what i mean like they don't have time to respond to every single little comment or like or whatever yeah small art accounts will always react or engage and something else that i've discovered is that people notice if you like what you're doing or not even if you think they don't somehow they do so if you have a period of time where you just don't feel like posting at all or like you, you're just not feeling what you're making it's actually a better idea to take a break than to keep posting and keep grinding because people can tell if you're into it or not and that's actually one of the most important things i can't believe i'm saying this <laughs> almost at the end of this video but that's actually one of the most important things is that you have to like what you're doing because otherwise how would you expect other people to like it if you don't even like it yourself and it's really difficult to keep something going if you don't like it if you don't like doing it it's no fun at all so that's probably the biggest tip and another thing it's also luck even if you do all of these things chances are it, nothing is gonna blow up i mean things blow up quickly now it, it happens a lot more than it used to but if you keep posting, then someday, somehow, you'll get a post that receives some traction and then it'll all kind of get going. I mean, I've had countless redos and I, you know, changed my username, changed my profile picture on all different types of platforms. Like, I've, I've remade accounts so often and one time it worked out for me and the other times I was just, okay, I'm gonna keep posting and see where this goes. And if it doesn't go anywhere, it's still fun to do. Like that's the main thing, you know? Something that I've also learned about art accounts is that people like if it's about one topic, one or maybe two, people like consistency in their art accounts. So if you have a few different styles or ideas that you could really make separate accounts for it's probably worth doing that i know i go a little bit crazy <laughs> with that but it really also helps maybe to separate what is hobby and what is art art that's what i do as well like my fan art account is just a hobby but my real art art account i don't know what else to call it is more professional or things that i actually think are kind of good and it, i can't really post whatever i just post whenever i think okay this is something that i want to post on there whereas my fan art account i also post things that i'm like eh, it was fun to make and I, you know it's not great but it's just fun and that's it so it can help to have two different accounts because if you start mixing those you probably won't get a lot of followers because the people that are there for the art art have to see a lot of fan art which they don't want to see and the people that are there for the fan art have to see loads of other stuff that they don't want to see and something else that i found just 
really amusing and nice to have is a sketchbook art account. It's just the best thing ever. Like I use very few tags and it's just like my sketchbook and I put zero to no effort in when I'm posting and gaining a following or whatever. Like I just go, <laughs> I just post. And it's really nice to have that as well because sometimes you can build up this pressure in your head even if nobody's looking at it. Like even if you have just a few hundred followers and there's like nothing going on at all, there's still there can still be this pressure in your head of like, okay, I have to post or I have to make this really good. And it can be really nice to just have this chill account where you can just splurge everything you want to post. I think that's everything I wanted to say. And I realize I've been talking for half an hour already. So if you made it to this part of the video, congratulations. I hope you found it interesting. Um, if you have any questions about this or, you know, anything else, I'm reading your comments and, of course, I'll reply. So, thank you for watching. It was the second episode of Babel and Paint. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!